All right, so today we're going to talk about the Sennheiser Accentum wireless noise cancelling headphones. These. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Just a disclaimer here as we get going, this unit was provided by headphones.com. We just brought it up from the warehouse, but I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. So the Sennheiser Accentum is the latest in Sennheiser's wireless noise cancelling line. This one comes in at around $179, and... It bears a resemblance to their higher end momentum, but it is different in a number of ways. This is nowhere near as good feeling in the hand, if that makes sense, right? So it's not as sturdy feeling, it's not as robust feeling. It does actually feel like the material here will hold up over time, but you can tell that this is not a particularly refined, uh, you know, feeling or looking design. You can see even the seam at the top here. And when you pick this headphone up, there is nothing to it. Uh, this is an incredibly lightweight design, and that's good, but it also doesn't really give you that feeling of like, yeah, this is a this is a really well-built uh, product. But when it comes to headphone longevity, what you should know is that it's not necessarily about how premium the product feels, it's about, you know, the actual material and the design itself. And so just the fact that it doesn't feel particularly premium doesn't mean that it won't last. Um, and Sennheiser has demonstrated this repeatedly with their other, you know, headphone line like the HD6 series. Those ones are, you know, renowned for being, for holding up over time. But when it comes to the build quality of the design and the comfort, I have some gripes with this one. So the biggest one is that I find the clamp force to be too much. Now, I have a large head. I think maybe for people with smaller heads, the clamp force won't be an issue. Uh, but then I also find that for me, the pad opening is a little bit on the small side as well. The bottom here, it crushes my the bottom part of my ear. And I think that the takeaway here is that if you have a normal sized head and normal ears, that's no problem. I don't think you'll have an issue wearing this. But if you have a large head and giant elephant ears like I do, then this might be a problem. Now for the noise cancelling quality, so the amount that it actually attenuates, uh, this is reasonable. I would say that the noise cancelling is on par with other non-class leading noise cancelling headphones. However, there is some background hiss. And for me, that is always a deal breaker with these noise cancelling headphones. The back It's not like it's massive, it's its very faint, but I find that its it's distracting. Um, it's not something you notice too much when you have music playing, but when you just put the headphones on, uh, it, you notice it. And... Um, not a fan of that. But of course, we're all about sound quality here, so how does the Accentum sound? Well, let me tell you about that. We will dive into the frequency response graphs here momentarily. But one thing you guys can do for us, if you like what we're doing here uh, and you find it valuable, consider subscribing. It's something that costs you nothing, and it's basically an indicator if we're doing the right kind of thing, if this is the kind of stuff that you guys want to see. Uh, so consider that if you haven't already. Uh, and if you have, well, thank you. Um, with that out of the way, let me dive into the Sennheiser Accentum frequency response. So I'm going to pull up the graphs here. And what you're seeing here is a new way that we have of representing the data. And of course, this is all a work in progress. We're trying to make this as accessible as possible, you know, so that people don't accidentally misunderstand them or misuse them, because we see that quite commonly. So what we're showing you here is the frequency response compensated to diffuse field, flat diffuse field, so not with a tilt. And then we are representing it against that tilt just with preference boundaries. And this is based on what we know from the preference research for what most people prefer. You know, people have different preferences and there is no such thing as, you know, one true curve to satisfy all preferences, hence the range. But for anything that falls outside of the shaded area, that's worth paying attention to because this is where things are going to uh, be more likely to be perceived as having an imbalance in those regions. So let's take a look at the Accentum. For this one, there are actually multiple common results. What do I mean by this? Well, when doing the measurements, you have to do many different seatings. And what you typically find is that even though you will have, you know, outliers, there will be a trend in a general direction, and then you can know how the headphone is going to behave for most people. The problem is that for the Accentum, there are, it seems to be, three common results that I would get without really any rhyme or reason as to what the positioning is. And what's even stranger is that the difference in the results is primarily for the ear gain region. So that's right at around three kilohertz. And the treble stays consistent regardless of the positioning, regardless of the seating. And the bass is also fairly consistent. I think we can expect that in reality when people are listening to this headphone when they're using it, it could be any of these different results. So some people might hear it like this, some people might hear it like this, some people might hear it like this. And depending on how it's coupled to the side of the head, uh, that's going to basically determine how the result is for the person. And the middle result is also the one that is the most common across 
two different rigs, because I measured this both on the BNK5128 and also the Gross 43AG. And while I was able to replicate the same effect on both rigs, the most common result on, across both was the middle one. So what I've gone with here is essentially the mode result, and I think that that is the most fair way of representing this headphone. But it should be noted that for any given individual, it could be one of these other results. So if the coupling is for you the way that it is for you know position three here, it could be significantly boosted in the upper mids and in the lower treble. Whereas if it's closer to seating one, then it could sound particularly dark in that same region. So I think that's just something to keep in mind. And when I put it on my head, despite you know trying to move it around and in different positions, it's you know basically the middle result for me. That's that's what it is perceptually. So with that in mind, is the most common result here good? We can think of the sound signature here as being fairly consumer oriented with a straightforwardly V-shaped presentation with extra bass and a little bit of extra treble. I think the biggest issue with this, if you like a V-shaped kind of sound signature, which a lot of people do, uh, it's that the lower treble is gonna be a little bit uneven sounding as are the mids. And uh, that is how it also sounds to me perceptually as well. Uh, so, you know, it sounds like there's extra bass, it sounds like there's extra treble, and then there's a little bit of unevenness throughout. And while I think this one is reasonably competitive for its tuning at this price with other similar devices, um, this, this is not the kind of sound that Sennheiser's best headphones are known for. So if you're thinking, you know, Sennheiser does legendary headphones like the 580 and the HD 600 and stuff like that, uh, the sound profile here is very different from those. Obviously, they're in totally different categories and different price tags. I'm not comparing them. <laughs> um, but just know that, you know, what you're getting here is much more of that sort of consumerish tuning with added bass and added treble, right? That's, I think, how people are going to perceive this one. And it's not to say that that's a bad thing. Some people love that, but I do think that they go a little bit overboard with that, uh, with this one here. Thankfully, you do have an app and you have some EQ available in it. They have this process that guides you through doing the EQ in a way that is subjectively relevant. Uh, and I think this is a really cool way of doing it. It's kind of like when you go and get glasses and then they you know, show you different lenses and things like that and you can basically say that's more clear, that's more clear. It's a much more primitive system than that, but it's that kind of thing where you actually get to experience the adjustment and then decide which one you like better. My criticism of the app is gonna be the same that I have for basically every app that is like this with EQ functionality where you're not able to specify which frequency ranges you are affecting. So you have a, a number of set ones there. So you can do like 50 Hertz and you can do like 8K and, and a number of other ones there, but you can't input your own custom values there. And I think that that is a real shame. Uh, it's the same thing with, you know, some of the best noise canceling headphones in the world where there is personalization or customization available to you, but it is extremely primitive and basic. If you have a feature that guides you through the process, the way that you get with this platform, and, and again, I have to stress, this is a cool way of doing it because it actually gives you a real auditory experience. It's not just like, you know, specifying values. You actually get to hear what the adjustment is, uh, but then the adjustment is still this extremely basic, limited set of filters. And I get why they do this. They do this because they feel that EQ is too advanced. It's too difficult for the average person to get into. And, you know, the overall experience could be ruined because if you make some adjustments with EQ that are, let's say, not ideal adjustments, then it might mess up the experience. But at the same time, I feel that this is such a missed opportunity because they have this process that lets you actually hear what the effect is while your own music is playing. So my message to Sennheiser on this would be let people input specific values in the EQ app. As actually my message to literally any headphone developer making a noise canceling headphone with an app, please allow us to put in custom values for the EQ settings that we want to adjust. If you're not gonna do full parametric EQ, that's fine, but allow us to specify the values that we want to adjust. And it's the same with the vast majority of noise canceling headphones out there, with one exception that I've come across, and that is the AKG N700 NC Mark II. That allows you to basically adjust whatever you want. And that is something where other noise canceling headphones have a lot of catching up to do, including the high-end ones, like the Focal Batiste, like the Mark Levinson 5909, like the Sennheiser Momentum 4, the Sony ones. This is something that they all need to do better at. And sure, maybe there are actually some hardware-based limitations that I'm not considering for this, but if AKG can do it with their fairly inexpensive noise canceling headphones, I think so can everybody else. And as an example, I think the Accentum could be great if you could you know, manually specify 4K as the area that you wanted to adjust, if, if you did, for example, or say even 100 Hertz. Like that's the crazy one that's missing in my mind. Say what you want about you know, the upper mids and treble and whatever else, but like the fact that you can't adjust 100 Hertz is kind of a bummer. 
because uh, that's where the primary elevation is, or like 100 to 200 hertz. You can adjust 250, you can't adjust 100. <laughs> there really is not much of a downside to giving the customer base uh, the opportunity for additional personalization, especially in regions where the headphones frequency response is the way that it is. So in this case, the bass is significantly boosted. Maybe you want to downshelf the whole bass. Well, we should have the tools to be able to do that. Now, with all that said, I actually do quite like this platform. So I think they can make improvements, and I think I've been very clear about what those improvements are. But as far as a platform is concerned, I like that they're doing some of the things that they're doing here. I like the way they guide you through the EQ process. The app itself is easy to use. Uh, you also have a number of other functions there, like you have side tone there if you want. Um, you also have you know, the ANC and transparency mode uh, if you want to do that. Um, it's, again, fairly basic for this product, but if they iterate on this as a platform, maybe they can make one with bigger cups to fit my giant elephant ears. <laughs> they're on the right track with this, essentially. Now, as far as the subjective qualities here, there is really nothing to comment on here. This is nothing special, but it's also not bad in any particular way. There is no blunting or anything like that. Like, it doesn't sound like the trailing ends of tones are lopped off. Uh, it doesn't sound, you know, meaningfully muffled or anything like that. It doesn't sound overly spacious. Or it doesn't sound too intimate. It sounds normal, and I think that that's good. It's just that this isn't going to wow you with any sort of, you know, sheer resolution or anything like that that you might get from, uh, you know, high-end wired you know, open or close back headphones. And uh, I don't think we should expect that. Now I've compared it to a number of different headphones throughout. And I want to give you guys a conclusion. I think I'm going to break it down like this. If you care about the app based features here. So there's a noise cancelling headphone with the app. If you care about the connectedness of the device here, then I do think that this is good for the price. It's not great. It's not amazing. It has its issues. But I do think that this is good for people with uh, small to medium sized heads and small to medium sized ears. If you have bigger head and ears, then I'd say probably don't, probably skip this one. If you just care about sound quality though, for your noise cancelling headphones, I am going to recommend the Final Audio UX3000 over this. I think it just sounds better. Uh, just with the caveat that you don't get personalization with that one and you don't get an app. And that one is even more, it's far more basic and bare bones. So strictly for sound quality, by default, that one is better if you can find one. But for all of the rest of the features and integratedness and, you know, the ability to actually make adjustments, uh, this is going to be better. If you can spend a bit more money, then I am also going to recommend the AKG N700 NC Mark II over this headphone. I think by default, that one has a better tonality and it also allows you to adjust any frequency that you want which in my view is a key requirement. So that's the one that I would choose. I know it's more expensive than this one, but I do think that it is, you know, a worthwhile step up for that functionality. And I'd like to see a version of this headphone that's a little bit more appropriate for people with larger heads or with larger ears and increased personalization within the app. If they can do that, then they will have a real winner on their hands. And that does it for this video. If you're interested in any of our written reviews, that's up on the audio file section there up on headphones.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can also check out our forum where we will have posted measurements of various different headphones, including these ones. And you can chat with me and other like-minded audio folks on our Discord, also linked below. So come say hi. Anyways, that is all for me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.